like I want to dance. Uh, we just saw the three movies, which did better this weekend than the rest of the field. Boyhood is one that's so unique in how it was made. Critics have praised director Richard Linklater for his work on it, a project that took more than a decade to make. Our next guest is among the film's fans. She says it is one of, if not the film of the year. We'll get to it shortly. First, let's welcome back Filmstream's executive director, Rachel Jacobson. Good morning, Rach. Good morning, Mary. Um, so we've got a lot of ground to cover. Yes. And I think we should probably start with some of these filmmaker visits because, okay. you know, I know film buffs are going to love this, but I think it's just, it's cool to see what goes into this. So what's the first event? Yeah, so the first one is August 7th. There's this guy, David Wilson, um, who actually is the director of his own film festival. It's a documentary film festival in Columbia. Missouri and he made his own documentary and it's about Branson Missouri have you ever been to Branson no, my husband was just there a few weeks ago so he said he raved about it yeah so well, it was a great tale. you know people call it the music capital of the world mm -hmm. and so he made this documentary about Branson and he's a friend of the organization because of true false and everything else and he has a lot of friends here in town mm -hmm. and um, and also you know obviously Branson's in the Midwest and it's a really interesting portrait of kind of what goes on there so, so. that's David Boone uh -huh. then on August 21st. I don't know how Husker fans are going to feel about it, but it's called Jayhawkers. What's this one about? <laughs> okay, so this is actually about when Wilt Chamberlain had a brief stint on the KU Jayhawks. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so it's a narrative film and it's made by this guy Kevin Wilmot, who's actually a professor at KU, and he's gonna come to town. And for both these screenings, the directors will do Q and A's mm -hmm. afterwards. So it'll be really interesting and good for KU fans. Um, so I think it should be yeah. We know uh, a few of you. Yeah. And, and, we, and we like you, so enjoy that one. Um, Anita is another, but this isn't uh, part of the filmmaker series, but you still have some special things surrounding right. the screening. Yeah, this is actually a partnership with the Women in the Law section of the Bar Association and a group of women lawyers called Drinks Among Friends, and it's mm -hmm. about Anita Hill. Everyone oh, remembers. Oh, remember this. Yeah, this the Clarence Thomas, Thomas uh, Supreme Court, uh, the swearing in hearings. Mm -hmm. And so um, they, our partners have put together a panel discussion following, and and the documentary, I mean, I guess Anita has been doing some amazing work since um, since this. Um, and so the panel discussion will be about kind of speaking truth to power, mm -hmm. especially within law firms where there's kind of a hierarchical structure and mm -hmm. women still aren't as... Um, as big a portion of the lawyers, so um, I think it should be a really interesting conversation. July 30th is the date for mm -hmm. that event, Wednesday. and then some first-run films to discuss to A Most Wanted Man. Yeah, A Most Wanted Man, Philip Seymour Hoffman's very last, last lead performance, mm -hmm. obviously. And he's I've heard be, he was brilliant. Yeah, he is absolutely amazing in this one, and, and he does it with a German accent, which is obviously <laughs> kind of impressive, so okay. here he is with Willem Dafoe. It's an incredible cast. Robin, uh, Robin Wright Penn, mm -hmm. it, Robin Wright, I guess, is in it as well, and um, it's really well done. If you like a good spy movie, mm. um, that's what it is. It's just a, a, a spy movie that's really, really smart and really great acting, and that's playing right now. And it, it was actually, we just opened it Friday, and we had a great opening weekend with it. When does Closed Curtain open? Closed Curtain opens this Friday, August 1st, and um, that is an Iranian film. It's really interesting. The director, Jafar Panahi, has actually been banned from filmmaking in, in Iran, so he made this film illegally in his home um, undercover. So um, it's really interesting. It's an interesting freedom of speech issue. Um, and he's basically under house arrest. Is so. that what the film is about? Well, his experience? Or well, something it's else? actually, it, it, so uh, uh, Iranian filmmakers are known for doing kind of a mix of documentary and narrative. So it's got some of that in there, but it's also its own story. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of complicated, but uh, it's really good. I want to spend a minute on Boyhood. Mm -hmm. We mentioned this off the yes, top and, and why people are talking about <sighs> this movie to the extent they are, it took 12 years to make. Would you explain why? This is really a, a revolutionary idea, what Richard Linklater did. It is a revolutionary idea, and I will tell you that the execution is absolutely stunning. It is the most amazing film that I've seen in such a long time. It took him 12 years to make because he made this narrative film with the same cast, um, started off with the lead in it, the boy, um, he, as seven years old mm -hmm. and um, and filmed him and the rest of the cast every summer as they got older and his sister is played by the director's daughter mm -hmm. so she was a little bit older and so she you see them all grow up on camera mm -hmm. together and the scenes just shift from year to year and I mean I could have watched 12 more years I really could oh. have I mean because it's just riveting it's so amazing mm -hmm. like it just says something new about the passage of time and it's kind of shocking that mm -hmm. no one's ever thought of it before you know that no one 
one's ever. Will this be an award season, darling? Do you think? Because it's not doing much at the box office yet. But you were explaining it's right. not in full release yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Um, I mean, it's an independent film. So it, it basically started out in New York and LA, and mm -hmm. then it, this is a lot of the films that we show, you mm -hmm. know. And then it kind of rolls out to other cities, and then um, and it, we actually open it August eighth. So it comes to Omaha August eighth. And I think once it gets on a lot of screens, it's going you're going to start seeing it mm -hmm. in those um, in those box office lists. Um, and it definitely had one of the highest per screen averages. That's kind of how you rate the okay. art house releases. <laughs> so yeah. I think it made like fifty or sixty thousand dollars per uh -huh. screen um, in its opening weekend, which is huge. So um, so yeah, so it's doing really well. And yeah. I definitely, I honestly, I will predict right now best picture. Oh. And I I would never do that in August or July or whenever it is. But you know, I mean. I really do think that this is going to win Best Picture and the reviews. I, I mean, you've never seen such phenomenal mm -hmm. reviews. We'll make sure that sticks to the tape so that when the yes. season gets here, <laughs> you we can, can play it back. If our it's own, right. Yeah, our film Nostradamus <laughs> sitting here. Uh, the Forever Young series also continues, and you can learn about it online at filmstreams.org. The complete calendar of everything upcoming is posted there. Filmstreams is also active on Facebook and Twitter, you're welcome to get memberships or just go see whatever you want. It's all easy. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks we for appreciate having me you being again. here. Uh,